Dead by Daylight can be a stressful game sometimes, can't it? I'm here today to help relieve that feeling with some wholesome facts. Hey everyone, and let's get into it. Sable and Michaela both have their names on the Greenville Square statue. This is a nice detail on the newest map. If you head over to the large statue in the park area, you can find the names of both Michaela and Sable, who were mentioned to be good friends in the lore. It's nice to have small details like this present in the realms of the game. Have you seen this horse? This charm was made after the disappearance of Maurice. Back when Dredge released her the game, Maurice mysteriously disappeared from his position on the Father Campbell's chapel map. This charm was community made and features a missing poster for Maurice on its side, presumably used much like a missing poster would in real life life being hung up, only in this case on the hooks. Not only this, but out of the game, Behaviour also did a number of posts about Maurice's missing status, aiming to aid his eventual return to the realm. Nicolas Cage's outfits are all things he's actually worn. This one is sort of wholesome, I think. The fact that Nicolas Cage's in-game outfits are all just things he's worn at some point, and they get put into the game. It's also just quite cool comparing them and seeing where they originally come from. Jeff and Kate have their own special passes in the Iron Maiden cosmetics. This is likely down to them both being related to the music industry in some way, Kate being a performer herself, and quite possibly performing alongside or as a side act to Iron Maiden within the realm, with the cosmetics hinting toward it being a tour within the realm. For Jeff, he was once a roadie before he got into a fight at a concert and changed his life course. Both are likely fans of Iron Maiden though, and it's pretty wholesome they get the additional unique feature of passes. Trickster's Valentine's Day outfit has special voice lines. This one is particularly cool and weirdly wholesome, or debatably a bit disturbing depending on how you view it. The story behind this cosmetic is that Trickster would put on a special high effort show every year for his biggest fans, speaking to them all as if they were his valentine. This translates in game to Trickster's voice lines altering and being much more romantic and sweeter almost. Here's a few. Oh, Chucky recognizes Nicolas Cage and Ash Williams. Win. I know that. This is something that can happen whenever you play as Chucky, and either of these characters joins the lobby in some way. It's a nice detail where Chucky sort of stops, and his evil facade sort of fades for a bit as he recognizes them, likely concealing the fact that he's a bit starstruck. The clown made a stocking for Maurice. This is a simple but sweet one, and in general is sort of the only redeeming side to clown, that he likes and cares for Maurice quite genuinely. This extends from him likely pleading the entity to restore Maurice's sight, to providing him with with a lot of hay around the trailer, and finally in this charm, which depicts that he made up Maurice a Christmas stocking. There's a lot of funny and strange survivor lobby animations and poses. Rebecca will often put her arms up behind her head and just seem very chilled and relaxed, an odd sight within the realm. Quinton sometimes appears like he's just woken up whenever you switch to the lobby screen. Survivors will lean in and look at each other, seeming like they are checking on each other, which is quite sweet. Nicolas Cage will always seem very chilled out, Ace too. With certain combinations, you can get groups of extremely relaxed survivors, and it looks kind of funny, honestly. One thing you almost definitely know is that Jonesy the cat can sometimes appear in the lobby with Ripley, coming out to get some pets before disappearing back into the fog. However, Jonesy also appears elsewhere too. Jonesy can leap out of the lockers on the Nostromo map, sometimes when they are opened. This is a fun detail and is a nice way to further incorporate him into the realm. Michaela and Sable had cinema days together. This is a another sweet fact about Michaela and Sable, and is referenced in both Sable's lore, but also Michaela's tome cosmetic, describing the two of them going to the Greenville Square cinema together and watching movies, which is probably why it's also the main structure of that map. We further get a look at the type of films they might have been seeing, with many of the movie posters shown across the walls. It's a nice image and general change of pace for the realm, and gives some nice interconnectivity between survivor backstories, seeing as the only other bit of interconnectivity we have is Felix and Elodie, who only bond due to their strange location and eventual lack of parents due to entity attack. Talita and Renato are good siblings. There's lots of wholesome moments to pick up on between the Lyra siblings, but one of the more recent ones in the Neon Outfit sets 
describes the two of them at a club, Renato feeling nervous and going into a corner, Talita seeing this and then going to get him to dance with her, doing dance moves they made up as kids. It's nice to have this kind of strong family relationship in the realm, and it's definitely a wholesome part of the game. Another wholesome sibling relationship is that of Charlotte and Victor, with their small visible moments in the realm of affection. They might be on the bad side, but it's still a wholesome thing to view, depending on the context. Billy has a number of fun seeming outfits. Where other outfits have darker origins though, superhero Billy has a fairly wholesome one, and a thing that gave Billy hope where he otherwise had none. This originates partly from his tome lore, where he was younger and locked away. He would learn about superheroes on his TV, with there being seeming references to characters like Superman, as the name Clark is mentioned. The outfit we have in game appears to be the universe's version of Batman, with the logo looking quite similar. Billy owns one of the comics, and in the realm has constructed a replica outfit, which is quite wholesome. He finally gets to embody the role of a superhero. Trapper achieved a dream in the realm. This one is sort of wholesome, but also not so much. It's wholesome from a certain perspective, let's say. You need to have an altered point of view. Trapper's hockey mask cosmetic tells the story of Trapper always wanting one as a child, and wanting to play the sport but never being able to. The means by which he uses it in the realm isn't the best, let's say, but it's nice he at least got to achieve a small dream despite his place nowadays in the realm. There's some humanity in there. The entity does this in small ways too with other characters, granting their dreams to come true. Another big one is the outfit created from Charlotte's dream of a new world. The entity took this dream and created her very own pioneer look to help fulfill her. The entity took Naughty Bear's narrator to the realm with him. This one is another sort of wholesome one, it very much depends on how you view it, but I do think it's kind of sweet and a rare time the entity is being understanding and kind of wholesome. In the Naughty Bear games, there's a narrator who talks over what is happening, and in the realm, it appears that narrator was taken with Naughty and made manifest in the realm. Quite a nice thing to do, and it allows Naughty to sort of have a voice despite otherwise being unable to speak. Artist dresses were all made by her own hand. This is a nice detail, I think, and definitely a humanizing element to her character. One defining feature of Artist is that she always has very elegant dresses on, which relay her emotion or feeling in some way, all of which were seemingly crafted by her own hand. Where a character like Trapper might have created his own outfit and weapons from bone and cast metal, Carmina opts for unique dresses. One thing I find very wholesome is Vittorio's experience of the modern world. Vittorio is fascinated by the modern world and many of the things that come with it. It was always pretty funny that when he initially arrived in the fog, he was sort of dripped out and had a fade despite him being from medieval times. But it's nice that this was equally sort of recognized as a bit odd, and altered into being sort of a feature which can be attributed to his intrigue. In this particular set, there's a number of funny passages about him discovering the modern world, and experiencing it for the first time. I especially like the one about his headphones. The new survivor came to the realm by Will, and seems to just generally be pretty okay and content with being there. She cracks lots of jokes, makes references to the Wizard of Oz, and the character of Dorothy, and is curious as to why the survivors don't have marshmallows yet, despite there being a campfire. Sable's voice lines are overall pretty wholesome I would say though, bringing a unique and wholesome vibe to the realm. Outfits by community artists is a great thing for the game. If you didn't know, many of the current outfits in the game were made by players of the game. It's something I really like, and it's something I think pretty much all developers should try to do in some way, as it's a great means to see a lot of creativity and interesting designs for different characters. The Legion each have their own mixtape in the realm. This is a nice allowance by the entity providing the members of the Legion a level of joy within the realm. It further seems to want to understand music and experiment with it too. When using a combination of tracks, a new sound can be created. There's even the Fuming mixtape, which features entity sounds on it, as if it's laying down some verses to their beats. It's all pretty wholesome honestly. This can be sort of applied more generally to the iridescent add-ons too. Many are gifts created from the fog and given to the characters as a reward, or sometimes even a comfort. Not quite wholesome like the mixtapes, but wholesome considering this is the entity doing it. Finally, some survivors do their best to cheer others up. It's got to be quite tough in the realm of the entity, but there's a number of survivors who do their best to keep the mood up and motivate others to keep going. A wholesome and positive attitude to the otherwise nightmarish world of Dead by Daylight. Thanks for watching, and okay, bye!